This is Barry Zelma speaking for Claim School Incorporated's blog, Zelma on Insurance. Today it's time to talk about underwriting and why it has absolutely nothing to do with claims. Underwriting is always performed before a policy is issued and therefore claims of post-loss underwriting must always fail. In California, a policy was effectively rescinded because the insured misrepresented facts material to the decision of the insurer to insure or not insure, regardless of claims made of post-loss underwriting. The remedy of rescission was originally created by the ecclesiastical courts of ancient England, who were charged with reaching fair results rather than giving a money judgment. As courts of equity, they voided contracts that were obtained by mistake, misrepresentation, concealment, or fraud. In the United States, the equitable remedy of rescission is still available, and the state and federal courts sit as either a court of law or a court of equity as needed. In California, the ancient equitable remedy was codified in part as follows. California Insurance Code Section 331 provides, quote, concealment, whether intentional or unintentional, entitles the injured party to rescind, close quote. Insurance Code Section 359 provides, quote, If a representation is false in a material point, whether affirmative or promissory, the injured party is entitled to rescind the contract from the time the representation becomes false. Rescission has nothing to do with claims, other than as a consideration during a claims investigation. Underwriting is a decision-making process based upon information submitted by the insured to the insurer to obtain a request or a proposal for insurance. When the proposed insured lies to obtain the insurance, the insurer may seek equity from the court and have the contract declared void from its inception. To do otherwise would be unfair and allow a fraud to profit from wrongful conduct. Rescission, therefore, is an important equitable remedy that is hoary with age. It should not be limited by claims of bad faith. When an insurer learns it was deceived into insuring someone, it would not have insured it should be able to legitimately exercise the rights provided to parties to an insurance company or insurance contract by the California Insurance Code without fear of a tort action in return. Rescission is not, as some members of the plaintiff's bar would have courts believe, post-loss underwriting. Since underwriting is a decision-making process, where the insurer's underwriter takes information from a proposed insured in an application for insurance and using that information to make a reasoned decision whether to insure the applicant, the underwriting is after loss only when an insurer is considering a request to renew the policy. As you read in the following, Determine if any underwriting was done by the insurer after the loss. In Nieto v. Blue Shield of California, a 2010 decision, the California Court of Appeal noted that plaintiff and appellant Julie Nieto failed to disclose information about her medical condition and treatment on a health insurance application she submitted to defendant and respondent Blue Shield. She filed an action against Blue Shield after it rescinded her insurance policy. The trial court granted Blue Shield's motion for summary judgment, ruling that it was entitled to rescission as a matter of law in view of the undisputed evidence that appellant 
Ms. Nieto made material misrepresentations and omitted material facts regarding her medical history. The undisputed evidence established that the information that Nieto provided to Blue Shield was false, and contrary to her assertions, Blue Shield had no statutory duty to show that Nieto's application had been physically attached to the insurance policy, nor to conduct further inquiries during the underwriting process to ascertain the truthfulness of her representations before it issued the policy. Approximately two months after a November 2008 hearing, the trial court issued an order granting summary judgment. It determined the undisputed evidence satisfied the elements of fraud or deceit justifying Blue Shield's rescission of the policy. More specifically, it found the undisputed evidence showed that Nieto's application contained a number of material false representations and omissions concerning her medical history. Nieto was either aware the representations were false or exhibited a reckless disregard for the truth and made the representations with the intent of inducing Blue Shield's reliance on them. Blue Shield relied on the information in the application, and Blue Shield was harmed by issuing the policy. Given the undisputed evidence, the trial court further determined that the insurance code gave Blue Shield the right to rescind the policy. The record before the court supported the conclusion of the trial court that Blue Shield ad adequately pleaded the issue of fraud in its answer, asserting an affirmative defense upon which Blue Shield relied and did not discover the falsity thereof until the time of the reception. Even if Blue Shield had not pleaded the issue of appellant's fraud, as an affirmative defense, an affirmative defense may be raised for the first time in a summary judgment motion absence of showing of prejudice. Because Nieto had sufficient notice of and an opportunity to respond to Blue Shield's motion asserting that her fraud justified rescission of the policy, she suffered no prejudice by responding to the motion on its merits. The undisputed evidence established that Nieto made material misrepresentations and omissions on the application regarding her medical condition and treatment. Nieto responded negatively to the inquiries in the medical history portion of the application when in fact she had suffered from chronic back problems throughout 2005 and previously. Nieto represented that her last doctor's visit had occurred three years earlier when in fact she had been seen and received significant treatment from Dr. Nation in February of 2005, and she had seen Dr. Rockenmacher at least 17 times between February and May of 2005, including the day she signed the application. Finally, Nieto represented that she had not taken or been directed to take any prescription medications in the past year when, in fact, she had filed and filled at least 10 prescriptions for four different medications and had received two steroid injections as well as an oral steroid. The undisputed evidence further established that Nieto's misrepresentations and omissions were material to Blue Shield's decision to insure her. According to Blue Shield Life's underwriting guidelines, the medical conditions reflected in Nieto's medical and pharmacy records, if disclosed on her application, would have rendered her Nieto ineligible for re enrollment in any Blue Shield Life IFP product, although the trier fact is not required to believe the post-mortem testimony of an insurer's agents that insurance would have been refused had the true facts been disclosed. Nieto asserted that her declar in her declaration in which she averred that she did not intend to defraud Blue Shield created a triable issue as to whether she misrepresented or omitted material facts. The Court of Appeal noted, however, in response, that the rule in insurance cases is that a material misrepresentation or concealment in an insurance application, whether intentional or unintentional, entitles the insurer to rescind the insurance policy ab initio, Latin for from its inception. 
Moreover, the rule is codified in the insurance code so that any material misrepresentation or the failure, whether intentional or unintentional, to provide requested information permits rescission of the policy by the injured party. Accordingly, evidence showing that Nieto lacked any intent to defraud failed to create a triable issue of fact. Nieto's undisclosed intent was just irrelevant. Nieto's application contained material misrepresentations and omissions concerning her medical history and conditions, medications taken, and recent physician visits. Had she accurately and completely disclosed those matters, she would have been denied coverage. Based on the undisputed facts, the Court of Appeal concluded Blue Shield was entitled to rescind Nieto's policy and that there was no, no even thought of post-loss underwriting. This video was adapted from my blog, Zalma on Insurance, which is available free to anyone who clicks on the URL zalma.com slash blog, where you will have access to more than 4,500 blog postings. It's also available free as a video on rumble.com or youtube.com. And if you like this video, please click on the like button or the thumbs up button to show your intent. And you might also please tell your friends and colleagues so that they too can subscribe to the blog and or the videos and be able to have the same access that you have. And finally, if you want further detail into insurance and insurance claims, please consider subscribing for a small fee to my Substack publication or my Locals community. Thank you for your attention.